Hello, and welcome to Chapter 7 of the Blended Learning Guidebook. As we continue to explore our theme of finding the right blend, we turn now to the synchronous and asynchronous activities to support your teaching and learning. Traditionally, blended learning meant a combination of live, in-person classes with delayed, anytime, anywhere online activities. However, as we've seen in Chapter 5 of this guidebook, we have a range of technologies available to support live and collaborative learning online, such as web conferencing systems, chat rooms, and collaborative games. We're no longer limited to thinking that all live activities will take place in person. In this chapter, when we speak of finding the right blend, our focus will be on the blend between time-independent asynchronous activities and live synchronous activities, some of which, which might happen in person while others happen online. While we think of the ideal learning situation, we often imagine the seminar where teachers and learners engage in a dynamic and spontaneous exchange of ideas with Socratic questioning and vigorous debate. Or we think of the inspiring lecturer who can create a passionate interest through tone of voice, gestures, and demonstrations. In short, we often think of the ideal learning situation as synchronous involving the live and direct interaction between learners and between learner and teacher, where both social and teaching presence are strong and immediate. There is, however, a second dimension to learning, and that is the deliberate and reflective processing of ideas, the internalization of new concepts, and the gradual synthesis and integration that leads to a deeper and more personal, meaningful form of learning. Some students may be able to achieve this deeper level of understanding in class, but for most, it will come sometime later. And because it will come at a different moment for each learner, this dimension of learning is essentially time independent or asynchronous. Blended learning as a blend of synchronous and asynchronous activities allows us to integrate both of these dimensions of learning, the strong social and teaching presence of live collaborative activities together with the deep, reflective, cognitive presence of asynchronous activities. In the previous chapter, we saw how the community of inquiry framework can help organize and give direction to our use of learning management systems. A similar idea applies here in that we can plan activities to support social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. For example, some activities can be selected for their social presence, such as activities designed to create a collaborative learning environment. Other activities will be selected for their support of cognitive presence, moving learners through content, and still others will be selected for their teaching presence, managing the social and cognitive activities. By relating our activity design to the community of inquiry framework, not only do we ensure that we have a range of activities, but that they work together to support each other, as do the three presences themselves, creating a deep and meaningful learning experience. As you work through this chapter and consider activities for your own blended learning design, it will be important not only to select activities from each modality, but to think of how your synchronous and asynchronous activities support one or more of the presences from the Community of Inquiry Framework. When fully integrated and supporting each other, they can be much more than the sum of their parts. Again, 
you might ask what role your synchronous activities are meant to play. At the very outset of your course or program, you might include a synchronous activity, such as an in-person session or online webinar, in which the teacher and students introduce themselves, meet their cohort, and review class expectations. That synchronous activity might then be reinforced by an asynchronous activity in which each learner posts a profile in the learning management system with a more careful, deliberate statement of who they are, their background, and their learning goals. Together, these activities begin to form a learning community through both direct, immediate social presence and deeper individual reflection. As you work through the chapter, you might also find it useful to think of blended learning as a blend of verbal and written communication. In our overview of learning technologies in Chapter 5, you saw that most of the synchronous technologies, such as audio or video conferencing, involved some form of verbal communication, whereas the asynchronous technologies, such as discussion boards or wikis, typically involved written communication. Spontaneous verbal communication is usually much less precise, caught up in the back and forth of dialogue. We think as we speak, and our words are usually only approximate suggestions of our ideas. In some cases, however, that lack of precision can be a strength. Because our words are only approximate, it can be easier to negotiate meanings and build upon each other's ideas, making verbal communication very effective for brainstorming and other constructive learning activities. On the other hand, activities that involve writing, design, or some other form of production, such as digital storytelling, ask learners to be much more precise with their ideas. What they lose in spontaneity, they gain in depth. As learning topics become more complex, the additional time and effort involved in drafting a written statement, especially one that may be semi-permanently available on a class discussion board, encourages deeper critical reflection. As with the blend of synchronous and asynchronous activities then, this blend of verbal and written activities should be designed to create an integrated whole. For example, a verbal brainstorming activity might lead into a more carefully written reflective response activity, while a written activity can then become the basis for a verbal discussion across the class. As always, keep your own teaching and learning situation in mind as you go through this chapter and consider how you might blend synchronous and asynchronous activities or verbal and written communications into an integrated blended learning design. Consider how the two modes of activities interact and build upon each other as you work toward a final design for your own blended learning. Thank you.